Oh, come on. It's, a, it's as plain as the nose on your face. The shotgun shoots high into the right. Hmm. You ought to try aiming at the X, Joe. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I did aim at the X, and from 30 feet away, I should have blown the whole middle out of that sure, car. You should, sure. Well, give me for asking what may seem to be an obvious question, but uh, this is a working ranch, isn't it? And you boys supposed to be out riding fence? Oh, yeah, we, we were already riding fence. We're going to go out again. Uh -huh. don't, don't you remember you told me to get a whole mess of quail for dinner? Yeah, yeah. Since when are we shooting quail in the living room? <laughs> it ain't likely you hit one in here either, Paul. Had two pot shots, and he ain't hit much of a feather. There's something wrong with the shotgun, Pa. See? Look. Yeah, sure is. Either that or the hunter. <laughs> yeah, ain't it funny, Paul? Man shoots at a target and he hits it. He's a good shot. He misses it. It's a bad gun. <laughs> you can't do better than right? Why don't you take it and try it? Yeah, it's more than just a little bit bad. The whole assembly's loose. Joe, hand me a shell. I think the, uh, there's too much room at the breach. Did I say it? Uh, you keep fooling huh? that Did gun, Joe. Did I say Joe. something wrong with it? You find something wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi, Al Benton. Awesome. Oh, hi, Ben. Oh, this is Deputy Gibbs from Olympus. Hi, Mr. Gibbs. Happy to meet you. Mr. Gibbs? Come on in. Come on in. Well, what brings you out here? Well, I'm sorry to say we're here on official business. Hello, Gibbs. I got a paper to serve, Candy. Uh, a warrant for your arrest. Yeah? For what? First degree murder. Wrong man, Gibbs. I didn't kill anybody. Let me see that one. Who am I supposed to have killed? Jedediah Wheelock. And I, I, I gotta take you back. Oh, no, you're not taking me anyplace. Candy, you're just making it worse. Don't try it. This gun's not worth much at 30 yards, but at 20 feet, it'll blow a hole in you the size of your hat. Put down the gun. No disrespect, but I don't intend to be dragged back and tried for something I didn't do out in that town. But you know this fellow. What's his name? Jed Wheelock, yeah, I know him. You say you're innocent, fine, I believe you. We all believe you. We'll back you all the way, but you've got to face this thing. We'll get your lawyer the best. Joe will ride with you to Olympus. If that's all right for the deputy. I'm glad to have the company. Paul, why don't we all go? Joe can handle this. You uh, send us a telegram if you need any help. Right. You ready? No. But I'll go. I'll be in touch. take Gibbs to get back, Sheriff. Two days, Mr. Wheelock. Two and a half at the most. He sent the telegram day before yesterday. Should be in this afternoon. Yes, uh, thank you, Dawes. I'd already reached that conclusion. No doubt about this Candy being the right man. Appears to be. Well, he's the one man with motive and opportunity, Mr. Wheelock. He's being brought in, that's what counts. But I want to make sure he's guilty. If he was picked up on the Ponderosa, that means he's one of Ben Cartwright's hands. Cartwright has a reputation for sticking by his men. Well, guilty is guilty, Mr. Wheelock. The law doesn't pay favorites. It better not, Mr. Prosecutor. My son was shot to death, but no one is ever going to be able to say that A.Z. Wheelock railroaded an innocent man. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Mr. Wheelock. Gibbs is bringing in the right man. And he's going to hang. I'll guarantee you that. somewhere before, Mary Elizabeth. No, really. Mrs. Daly has a package all ready for me. Uh, all I have to do is pay her and pick out a matching ribbon. All right. Hold up, fellas. 
Uh, all right, just snap some handcuffs on your candy. Just so the sheriff will see him when we get to jail. Sure. Much obliged. Well, they fixed that big window on the saloon, Candy. <laughs> oh, you should have seen it, Cartwright. Best fight Olympus ever had between him and Wheelock, the man he shot. Oh, excuse me. I meant the man they say you shot. It's all right. Anyway, old Candy picked up that Wheelock boy and flang him straight through that big window. Do tell. And he dove right through what was left of the glass after Wheelock, didn't you, Candy? Anything you say. By the time it was through, <laughs> the saloon was a mess, and they had, they had busted seven more windows in the hotel and the, and the general store. Whoa-hoo-hee! Like you say, Gibbs, woo-wee. I'll say one thing for you. You sure picked a heck of a way to show this town how you felt about Jed Wheelock. And on the very morning of the day he was killed. There, you see? Oh. I'll get on maybe a second. Isn't that candy? Yeah, so watch the step, my dear. Doesn't look like a murderer. I wish someone would tell me what a murderer looks like, Mary Elizabeth. Given sufficient provocation, anyone can murder. Sudden rage, revenge, self defense. A hundred motives, a thousand set of circumstances. And in each case, someone dies. Yes. Society demands that someone pay for it. You know this cowboy Candy? I heard about him as all well, lazy. Hothead, isn't he? He's supposed to be. Yeah. Darn near smashed up the whole street fighting with Jed, didn't he? Mm hmm. Fuller, the sheriff is strictly a yes sir, no sir man. Well, you point him in the right direction, put him up against a man with a gun, you couldn't ask for a better man. But he's useless in an investigation. Yes, I know. Hub does isn't much better. The only reason he's prosecutor is because you didn't want the job. I don't think he'd know a piece of evidence if it stood up and bit him. I think you're being awful hard on him, Maisie. I want to make sure that the right man goes on trial for Jed's murder. Did you understand? Yeah. I'm not afraid of Ben Cartwright or anybody else. Nobody's going to say that we strung up an innocent man just to get revenge for my boy. Well, I've looked at the evidence. Looks pretty strong to me. I don't want it pretty strong. I want it airtight. I know, Easy. I'll take care of it. A uh, fuller. Yeah. I don't want people to say that the deck's stacked. Now that cowboy's got to be defended and defended right. I know, Easy. I'll take his case. You do what? Well, who else is there? Unless he sends to Virginia City, and I doubt if he has the money for that. And even if he has, the delay could hurt him bad. But you're my lawyer. Everybody knows that. And you think people would figure you had me take the case so that cowboy couldn't possibly get off? What else? There are a lot of people around this town that are so jealous of me, they'd believe anything as long as it was the worst. It's the price you pay for success, Hazy. Name me one man who would believe that you are honestly trying to get that cowboy acquitted. Two men. Me and you. I'd believe it because I'd know it was the truth, and before I was finished, everybody else in town would believe it, too. And you, Wazy, you'd believe it because you know I don't work any other way. If I take his case, I fight for him. All right. You got my blessings. Defend him. If he'll have me. After all, it is his choice. Hey. Hmm? Just so there's no mistake, I hope it's open and shut, like Dawes says. I hope the cowboy hangs. Full research on this case. I think you'll find it in this volume. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Fuller? That's 
right, Mr. Um... Cartwright. Joe Cartwright, I rode in this morning with Deputy Gibbs and Kenny. Oh, yes. Um, pull up a chair, Cartwright. Sit down. Thank you. The uh, sheriff tells me you offered to defend Kenny. That's right. You know the case pretty well? As well as anyone, I guess. You mind a personal question? No, go right ahead. Did you offer to defend him because you think he's innocent? That's quite a coincidence, Mr. Cartwright. My daughter asked me that same question not a half hour ago. And what did you tell her? Same thing I'll tell you. The law says he has a right to a speedy trial by a jury of his peers, the right to face his accusers in open court, and the right to counsel. In other words, you think he's guilty? Well, that decision will be up to the judge and the jury. If I'm retained as his counsel, I'll do my best to prove him innocent. But between you and me, Mr. Cartwright, we're going to need all the help we can get. Yes, sir, we just about give up hope of ever finding you to let telegram come from Virginia City. There must have been over a hundred telegrams sent out. Every place we could think of. Sorry to cost the taxpayers so much money. <laughs> what do you mean the taxpayers? Why, A.Z. Wheelock sent them telegrams. Every one of them. Paid for them, too. Can't really blame him for that, boy. After all, you shot his son. I didn't shoot anybody. All right, all right. Leastways, you made it look like you shot his son. Running off like you did. Didn't run off, either. I left so I wouldn't kill him. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Ford. Yes. Hold it, young man. Give me your gun. Kenny, this is Mr. Fuller. Yeah, I know. How do you do? Sit down, Kenny. You're in big trouble. Kenny, I don't know you really, but I've seen you around town. I'd be glad to act as your counsel if you want me. Why? Why would you be glad to act as my counsel? If you think I got money, I ain't. Come on, come on, take it easy. No, 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 that's all right. He's got a perfect right to ask questions. Maybe you think I'm the most popular fellow in Olympus, and you got political ambitions. What lawyer hasn't? Oh, come on, you got to have some reason for wanting to defend me. No, Kent, you know, it's not so much a reason as a principle, you might say. I think you're entitled to the best legal help available. And that's you. That's me. Also, the only legal help available in this town, except for the prosecutor. Joe, you've talked to him. What do you think? We could get in touch with Pa and see about a lawyer from Virginia City, but Mr. Fuller's got a good reputation. Thank you, Cartwright. Gonna have to make a decision. You got a hearing day after tomorrow. All right, Mr. Lawyer, you're hired. And not only did the defendant threaten Jed Wheelock with bodily harm on numerous occasions and before numerous witnesses, he did provoke and engage Jed Wheelock in a long and savage fight on the main street of Olympus. Objection, I... Your Honor. The argument the prosecution is talking about has nothing to do with the matter at hand. It has everything to do with it. I can and will produce 50 witnesses who we saw... We admit and... the altercation, Your Honor. No sense of wasting the court's time. I agree. I should like to point out, however, Your Honor, that nothing the prosecution has said has any bearing on the issue. Has the prosecution anything further to offer in the way of evidence? No, Your Honor. <clears throat> Not at the moment. <clears throat> Mr. Fuller. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client has been accused of the willful and cold-blooded murder of Jed Wheelock. In support of this allegation, the prosecution has offered nothing but the flimsiest of evidence. I intend to show how little real fact and how much imagination the prosecution has brought to this arraignment. And do that as briefly as possible. Of course, Your Honor. My client was cheated by Jed Wheelock, denied of money as rightfully due him. Objection. This is pure supposition. Well, Mr. Fuller, when Your Honor, true or false, my client believed he was cheated by Jed Wheelock. And that's all that really matters here. He tried to collect his money. He argued with Mr. Wheelock, as any man who believed he'd been cheated would. They fought. Not in secret or in hiding, but in full view of half of the people of this town. Now, Judge, you and I know that fights are not uncommon in Olympus. Men argue. They settle their arguments and vent their anger with their fists. They fight. One or the other wins. They shake hands. An old and common practice. Now, I submit, Your Honor, that any man who was planning a cold-blooded murder would not first announce that plan by staging a brawl in the middle of Main Street. 
I further submit, Your Honor, that my client stands accused of first-degree murder because no real attempt has been made to find the real criminal. The defense knows better, Your Honor. Sheriff Henning looked into this matter thoroughly. Your Honor, no one has a higher regard for Sheriff Henning than I do. Olympus is indeed fortunate to have him as its protector. We all know that no gunman in this territory would dare to go up against Sheriff Henning alone in a fair fight. But some of us also know that as an investigator, the sheriff leaves a great deal to be desired. <laughs> That's enough. Any more and I'll have the room cleared. Go on, Mr. Fuller. Your Honor, I challenge the validity of the evidence offered by the prosecution and move that the charges against my client be dismissed. Your Honor, hey, Judge. Uh, Your Honor. I've seen the killing, and I figured I ought to tell you about it. I object to your honor. This is a trick of the prosecution. Mr. Dawes, did you know about this? No, your honor. Mr. Eggers, if you saw the killing, why haven't you come forward before? Well, sir, your honor, the plain truth is I was scared. I mean, with the killer running loose, if I told what I'd seen, my life wouldn't be worth a red cent. But now that you've got him locked up, I can talk. You're talking about me, Eggers. You're lying. I didn't kill Jed Wheelock. The prisoner will sit down. All right, sit down. Mr. Fuller, that evidence you were talking about may have arrived. Take off your hat and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I sure do. Sit down. Mr. Dawes, will you question the witness? Did you see Jed Willock killed? Well, if you mean, did I see the bullet hit or the body fall, the answer is no. But I've seen everything else. In your own words, what did you see? Well, I went out to the Wheelock horse ranch. I walked out. It was after dark, and I cut across the field past the corral, and when I got near the barn, I heard a shot. First, there was loud voices, but then I heard the shot. Well, go on. Well, when the shooting starts, I stop. I stepped into a shadow. Then I saw the door open, and I, I seen Candy come out, and I seen him get on his horse, and I seen him ride away. You're a liar! That's enough. Your Honor, I should like to ask this witness a question. No objection, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, sir. Mr. Eggers. Mr. Eggers, do you drink? <laughs> Surely you know that. Were you drinking the night of the killing? I was not drinking. As a matter of fact, I went out there to try to borrow some money so I could. <laughs> no more questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would like to repeat my motion to have the charges against my client dismissed. Motion denied. Court orders the defendant bound over for trial. Court's adjourned. Said he was going to find till Eggers came in. The unexpected eyewitness, Mr. Cartwright, is something hard to beat. Oh, you mean eyewitness he was lying? Well, this was just a hearing. At the trial, I'll destroy him and his story. I think I better get in touch with my father. Whatever you think best. The uh, telegraph office is just down the street. Things look bad for Candy. Need you and Haas and our lawyer. Signed, Joseph. Can you send that right away? Yeah. It's uh, 60 cents for every 10 words. That'd be a dollar twenty. There you go. Thank you. Mr. Wheelock would like to see that telegram before it's sent. Much obliged. Yes, he certainly will be interested in seeing this. See your trouble.
I want to talk to the prisoner. Card right. How you doing? Joe. Why wasn't AZ Wheelock in that courtroom today? He won't rest until his son's murderer is convicted and hanged, and he wasn't even at the trial. Why not? That's a good question. Why not? Because he knew Eggers was going to walk through that door. That yeah, could be. So everybody else was pretty surprised. Fuller and that prosecutor looked like they got hit by lightning. So how well did you know this, uh, this Eggers? Oh, he's a saloon swamper. Those odd jobs. Drunk. Did he have anything against you? We didn't even know each other. Yeah, well, that leaves two possibilities. One, the old man's just making an honest mistake. The other, he's being paid to lie. He's lying. That's what Fuller thinks. He figures he can take him and his story apart at the trial. He didn't do much to him today. This is just a hearing. Besides, if he needs help, he's going to get it. He sent a telegram. Pa, Hoss, and the best lawyer in Virginia City are on their way here. Joe, thanks. You know, I'd feel better if you didn't think we needed the extra help. But, Papa, suppose he is telling the truth. Supposing Jed Wheelock did try and cheat him out of payment for five horses. But, my dear, even supposing it's true, that wouldn't ameliorate the offense. Murder is murder. And why would young Wheelock cheat him? He certainly didn't need the money. Because Jed Wheelock was no good, that's why. Because he always had to get at people and try and hurt them. That's the way he got his fun out of life. And he always knew what to use. Thought you'd never hear me talking about Jed Wheelock like that, did you, Papa? Well, aren't you proud of me now that I can finally admit he was no good? I heard from your Aunt Ruth today. She and your cousin Sally have fairly turned their house upside down, getting it ready for you. They can hardly wait to see you. Mary Elizabeth. Yes? Hi, Mr. Fuller. My name's Cartwright. Horse Cartwright. Joe's brother? Yes, sir. The sheriff told me I might find him here. No, no, he's not here. But won't you come in? You're, um, you're a long way from home, young man. Yes, sir. Did your father come with you? No, he got called down to Carson City. I'm alone. Uh -huh. the sheriff tells me that i got to get your permission before I can talk to Candy. Is that a fact? Well, yes, that's just a normal legal precaution. He's appointed me as attorney. Yes, sir. No. You ain't got nothing against me talking to him, have you? No, 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 of course not. Uh, I'll go with you. Mary Elizabeth... Mary Elizabeth, we have a visitor. I have to go out for a while. This is my daughter, Mr. Horse Cartwright. Happy to meet you, ma'am. Uh, my daughter's heading east very shortly. Yes, yeah, she'll be going to school in the east. Staying with my sister up in Maine until she makes up her mind which school to grace. Good night, my dear. Good night. Mr. Cartwright? After you. Chad Wheelock ordered 15 head of horses by telegraph. I drove him through town. I drove him out to his ranch. He accepted delivery. We agreed on a price, $50 a head. He asked me to meet him in town at the bank the next morning. So I did, and he gave me $500. I said, uh, you're $250 short. He said, no. 10 head of horses at $50 a head is $500. I said, 10? I delivered 15. He called me a liar, and that's when I hit him. How many times are you going to go over his story? You talked about it all night long. It's daylight. It's my case and my client, Sheriff. You let him talk. What are you doing here? I sent you a telegram. I've been riding two days. We got tired of waiting for word, and Paul had to go to Carson City, so he sent me alone. Joe, where you been all night? I went out to Wheelock's ranch. What would you want to go out there for? Because I wanted to check on Edgar's story. I already checked it. On the night of May 29th, there was a full moon. Eggers could have seen Candy. If there wasn't anyone there when I was there, how many times do I have to tell you that? Oh, Candy, what did happen out there at Wheelock's that night? Oh, I've been over this and over Just this. one more time for us. All right, I was still burning. He owed me $250, open and above board. 
So I went out to the ranch, and I told Jed he'd better pay me the money then and there, or I'd... <laughs> well, I threatened him. You know, the kind of things you say when you're mad. Well, he just sniggered at me, told me to go ahead and shoot. Go oh. Well, I've never shot first in a fight yet. I wasn't about to start then. I called him some names, hoping he'd draw. He just stood there, laughing. So I got on my horse and I rode out. Just, just like that, huh? Well, I know it sounds funny, but I was scared I might kill him. The next morning, I got on my horse and I rode out of town. It was two, three weeks later before I even knew he was dead. That's the truth. I we believe you. Do you believe me, Mr. Fuller? You don't have to convince me. You have to convince the jury. <laughs> I'm disappointed your father didn't show up, Cartwright. How come? He figure our little town was too small to bother with? Thought he could send his boys to handle us, hmm? No, sir. He got called into Carson City. I bet he figured you boys could ride in, straighten out the trouble, and ride right out again. <laughs> well, it's not going to be that simple. Where you come from, you might not have heard of A.Z. Wheelock, but here I'm the big frog, and when I croak, the little frogs all hop. We're sorry about your son, Mr. Wheelock. Well, we came here to help a friend. I'm sure you don't object to that. This is my town. I don't like strangers butting in. In other words... Everybody's supposed to just sit back and watch an innocent man hang, huh? No. That cowboy's going to have the best defense possible. And then he hangs. Yes, if he's guilty. My son's dead. Shot before he could get his gun out of the holster. I didn't say this candy was guilty. His own actions done that. Well, that fight he had with Jed in front of a hundred witnesses. He was seen coming out of the house where Jed was shot. Well, that would be, uh, that would be Mr. Eggers. Well, I checked around about Mr. Eggers. People don't think too highly of him. They don't feel he's too reliable. Well, I admit he drinks. Why should he perjure himself? He didn't even know Candy. Mr. Wheelock, your son wasn't the most popular fellow around town, was he? He was envied because of me. There wasn't any real harm in him. Well, according to Candy's story, your son cheated him out of $250. My son's not alive to give his side of it. How would your pa feel if it had been you or your brother? Well, I guess he tried to turn the whole town upside down to find the truth. Well, there you are. And that's exactly what we're going to do. To prove Candy innocent. Good night, Mr. Wellick. Hey, listen, why don't you go on over and see how Candy's doing? I'm going to take it right out and talk to that fella Eggers. All right. What do you want, Eggers? I told you not to try now, reaching me. Oh, now, Mr. Fuller. That's no way to say hello to an old friend. It, it was right nice of you to come out here after I sent you the little note. Uh, would you have a little drink? No, thanks. Uh, you don't mind if I wet things down. It, it gets a little dusty. All right, Eggers, I'm here. How much? Hmm? Eggers, whatever you think of me, I'm no fool. I'm not an unreasonable man. You've run out of money, right? Right. Well, you won't find me hard to deal with. I could have been a little more generous in the first place. Mm -hmm. Shall we say another 50? <laughs> <laughs> Doggone, there for a minute I thought you and me was going to be real partners. You're on the right road, but you didn't go far enough, Mr. Fuller. No. No. I've been thinking. There might be a good market for a man to swear to things that anybody wants him to swear to. Might be a lifetime job, you might say. <laughs> now, it stands to reason. You being a liar, you might like to have a good witness on your permanent payroll. Now, where could you find a better witness than old Eggers? Good, honest, loyal old Eggers. Who knows when to keep his mouth shut? <laughs> 
And knows what he's working for, too. Yes, might be a good living there. Money coming in week in, week out. Enough for liquor, tobacco, food. Occasional card game. <laughs> oh, oh, but never so much, Mr. Fuller, that, that your good witness wouldn't be right there when you needed him. Right there when I needed him. Everything straight and above board, just between you and me. I guess, suppose I were to tell you I had no money. I've used up every penny to send my daughter back east to school. And maybe you'd better go crawling to your boss, A.Z. Wheelock, and beg the money from him. I didn't realize you were so ambitious. A man's got to get ahead in this world, doesn't he? Yes, he does, indeed. What about the next one, Agus? Come again? What about the next world? Does a man have to get ahead in that one, too? You must be sure to let me know, Agus. I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I don't want any money. I, I, I was just joking. I was just joking, too, I guess. How could you possibly send me a message from the next world? Give me the gun. Your brother said you were coming out here. Guess I should have got here a little sooner. You're under arrest, Cartwright. For murder. Joseph heard a gunshot. He saw a man run out of Eggers' cabin. He yelled at him to stop, and then he fired. Now, that's two shots, right? Only one shot out of Joseph's gun. You want me to say I heard two shots? I didn't. I told you I didn't kill Eggers. There were three men in this town who would have wanted to see that eyewitness dead. Candy, your brother, and you. Candy was locked up in that cell. I found your brother standing over the body, a gun in his hand, freshly fired, one bullet gone. That's good enough for me. I'm going to tell you something. The same man killed Eggers that killed Jed. And I say the man that killed Eggers is the man who wanted to help Candy beat the rope. Oh, come on. That doesn't make sense. I'm not going to commit murder to protect anybody. Well, like your lawyer said at the hearing, I ain't much good at investigation. I apologize for that, Sheriff. And you don't have to be much good at investigation when you catch the man red-handed. All right, I'm going to tell you something else. I ain't going to stop until I've talked to every man in this town that may know something that'll help. You better be careful. That's what got your brother where he is. I'll be careful. <laughs> Father's not here. I uh, think he's... Ma'am, it's you I want to talk to. Yes. Come in. Uh, may I um, offer you some refreshments? No, no, thank you, ma'am. Why don't you have a seat? Thank you. Uh, Miss Fuller, I've been talking to everybody in town, or everybody that would sit still, that is, trying to find something that would help Candy. Did they? How well did you know him? 
just well enough to say hello to. He was... Well, some of the other cowboys that come into town are rough. But not Candy. He was always polite when we'd meet. So I just couldn't believe that he did it. He didn't, Miss Fuller. But who did? You know anybody that might have hated Jed? Anybody else he might have cheated? Anyone else he might have cheated? No, I, I don't know of anyone. Yeah, I reckon you wouldn't. Well, much obliged anyway, Miss Fuller. I, I wish I could have helped. I, I want to see the real murderer caught, too. Jed and I were friends. Of course. I hope we hadn't raked over too many memories. I'm much obliged again. What makes you think I could help you? What makes you think I would help you if I could? Because you said that you wanted to see the man who murdered your son hanged. And I believe that. It's true. And you said you wanted to see a fair and honest trial so no man could question it. I did, and I do. Then, Mr. Wheelock, help me find the man who murdered Eggers. Your brother was found beside the body with a gun in his hand. Oh, Mr. Wheelock, you, you know our paw, you know our reputation. You think little Joe would murder a man just to help a friend? Mr. Wheelock, I need your help and I need it bad. Who hated Eggers enough to want to see him dead? Eggers and your son. Nobody I can think of. I don't know. Jed had his fight, sure, but they weren't serious. What he had with Candy was, and there must have been others. You don't let go, do you? You tried to help Candy, now your brother's facing the same rope. I can't stand in your shoes, but I guess I know how you feel. I lost a son. When that happens, fast and unexpected, turns a man old and empty, awful quick. I had big plans for Jed. I wanted to see him married and settle. Thought for a while he was going to marry the Fuller girl. I wanted to give him everything. Hide hair and hooves. I just wanted to sit me down in the shade and play with my grandkids. Mr. Willock, did you say that Jed and Mary Elizabeth were... Serious? Well, I thought so. Seemed that way to me. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Willock. Father still isn't here. Ma'am, I'd like to talk to you again if I could. Yes, of course. You're, uh, you're going back east to school, I think your father said. Yes. Maine? Yes. It's a pretty place I hear. I guess it's good to get as far away from unpleasant memories as you can. Talking to some of the town folks, they told me that that young Wheelock used to squire you around some of the dances and socials and such. Yes. You know how people gossip. Maine. I believe your father said you were going to be staying with an uncle. Aunt. Oh, yes, of course. You, you must be very fond of her. We, uh, 
My, my, my father hasn't seen her in 20 years. Then you've, uh, you've never even met her? You must be looking forward to that. Going all the way back east to school to be with this aunt. But you haven't decided which school you're going to yet, have you? No. You'll make up your mind after you get back to Maine. Well, I guess that's about all I need to cover. I hope I haven't been too much of a bother. Not at all. Miss Fuller. It is school you're going back east for, isn't it? What do you mean? Is it school or a hospital? <laughs> Jed Wheelock, was it? Did he know you were carrying his child? I told him. And he said, How did he know that it was his? Oh, I loved him. Of course it was his baby. How could it have been anyone else's? He refused to marry. <laughs> then you told your father. No, Cartwright. She loved him too much. She wouldn't tell me anything. I knew there was trouble in more than just a lover's quarrel, so I rode out to see Jed to find out what had happened. He took great pleasure in telling me. Then you had better reason for killing him than Candy ever did, didn't you? No. Daddy wouldn't harm anybody. Tell him he didn't, Papa. Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth, he laughed when he told me you were pregnant. He gloried in his admission. He refused to marry you unless I could prove his parenthood. He said there had been others. That's when I killed him. Well, it ain't hard for me to sympathize with you, Mr. Fuller, but on the other hand, there's, there's an innocent man over there in the jail. Let's go talk to the sheriff. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I'm afraid that's not... Part of my plan. Plans or no plans. We're... Cartwright, don't reach for your gun. I'd hate to shoot you, but I will if I'm forced. Papa. No, Mary Elizabeth. I know what I have to do. Drop the gun. Papa! Papa! Papa, don't! Put the gun up, Mr. Fuller. Do like he says, Mr. Fuller. We don't want to get anybody hurt. chance to throw away his gun. Come on, come on. I've been in this town about six days too long. Mr. Wheelock? Uh, may I come in? Candy, uh, Sheriff told me I'd find you here. I want to see you before you rode out. It was uh, five horses, $50 apiece. 
That's two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't. Oh, it's your money. Put it away. All right, thanks. I was wondering, have you seen Mary Elizabeth since the funeral? Yeah, we saw her about an hour ago. We said our goodbyes. Well, have an easy ride home. Look, ma'am. So long, Mr. Wheeler. Steers get on the trail and be balled up an hour. Yeah, if I was a cart right, I'd think that was the sweetest sound there is. All that mooing going on. Yeah, yeah. It's the sound of money, hoss. Frankly, after a ride like that trail ride today, I'd just soon have a good soft bed. It's hard money anytime. Get it all squared away, little brother? Yeah, everything's fine. I got the night riders out. Can you have to take over race at midnight up on the East Ridge? I'll be there. Hey, Oz, I just passed the chuck wagon. I've seen he's got a nice pan of biscuits with your brand on them. Well, you'll just have to save them for breakfast. I'm cutting down like it into sand dust. Well, I know you're cutting down. That's why I said it was just one pan of biscuits. <laughs> Candy knows about this real fancy eating place in sand dust. Ain't that right, Candy? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's one, the golden something or other. Um, if it's still there, you'll be able to find it without me. Yeah, what do you mean without you? Where are you going to be? Well, I told Mr. Carwright, send us the end of the line. You realize how much uh, money I have burning a hole in my pocket? I can get all the way to Chicago. You mean to tell me you're going to pass up a ride on a, on a hard saddle all the way back to the Ponderosa just to, just to sit in some soft train and... And sip those drinks the waiter brings you with the, the ice and all in them. And look at the pretty girls who are going back east to have to spend all their time out west. Oh, so how come we never ran away from home? I don't know. But I can tell you that. <sighs> Both of you ought to quit the gabbing and get some shut out. We got that creek to cross them stairs more. If we don't get them in there to Mr. Haskell. Hey. Hey, no way. Don't have any money burn in nobody's pocket. You better be careful you don't blow that fire out. didn't drive them too hard. When you get back to the Ponderosa, you tell Ben how pleased I am you brought your herd all the way here to sand dust. Well, I'll be happy to hear that. So I gotta be honest with you, Mr. Haskell, that's not the real reason we drove those cattle to sand dust, because you pay 50 cents a head more. <laughs> and they're worth it to me. I'll have your money ready anytime you want to come by my office in town and pick it up. Good enough. We'll be through here pretty soon. All right. 
Be seeing you in town. Right. Sand dust. Rick men get a beer in a town name like that? <laughs> I'm buying. Three farewell beers. Candy, I never figured you're really serious. I don't want to uh, crowd you, but uh, as soon as I pick up my wages, I want to be leaving. Suit so yourself. <laughs> Get a hand to lose. I'll talk him out of it while we're having that beer. Ah, uh, maybe so. Come on, let's get back to work. Check these figures, Joe. All right. Hey, here's a little present from Pop. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> I got a present here for me. Uh, this is Valerie Townsend, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Very nice to meet you. Spanish sherry. <laughs> and wouldn't you know? <laughs> Spanish sherry? You guessed right. Same label, same year. I'll get your money now. All right. These figures look correct. Don't try anything and nobody will get hurt. Put them up and keep them there. Now back off. Back off! Open the safe, old man. <laughs> Open the safe. I, I, I don't know where I stopped. Well, you better remember. Get out of here. I, I, I you better hurry up, old timer. Or brother Billy will cut you to bits. Hi. My drovers are coming in here to get paid. They could show up any minute. You don't say. Now take a look out that there window. The sheriff is out of town. We took care of that. Better hope your men don't butt in, mister. What are you two doing here? I figured you'd be hunting down that cold beer about now. Well, we were, little brother, but uh, we didn't want to get too far ahead of you. Yeah, don't be a little while yet. Why don't you go on ahead? I'll catch up to you. Yeah. I talked old Candy into putting off that trip. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's real good news. Close the door. I'll see you later, huh? You stay right where you are. Not a sound from you. Out the back. Candy, take the other side. Back in the bar.
him out of here. Get up. Hey. You ain't gonna be here all very long, big man. Just killed Haskell. I had him in my sights, I should have squeezed. Heard some shots, what happened? A gang robbed Mr. Haskell. He killed him. That must have been all seven or eight of them. You got just one? Two dead behind the barn. Got a name, boy? His name's Billy. Heard him call another one Doug. All right, put your guns away. If there's any more shooting, we'll do it. So I like, a man knows what he's doing. On your feet. I want to see you all in my office. Take care of Hatch. Doc will be here in a few minutes. Where's your brother, Billy? Where do you hold up when you're in these parts? These folks were lucky you ran into a bad bunch. Doug and Billy Slater. Wanted dead or alive in seven states. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of time. Might as well sit down. Who saw the Haskell killing? I did, sir, Mr. Hosny. You two didn't see it, huh? No, all we saw was Billy toss the money bag to his brother. Four witnesses to a robbery, two witnesses to a murder. Looks like there's going to be a rope waiting for Billy Boy. <laughs> Doug will get me out. There ain't no jail that'll hold me, and you know it. Mine will. Valerie, how much money they get out of that safe, do you know? I'm not sure. Uh, enough to buy three or four herds the size of Mr. Cartwright's. Should I lock them up? You won't convict me. There's not going to be enough witnesses alive to testify. None of you! Do you hear what I'm saying? You're all going to be dead! I hope you folks have no pressing business in the next few days. You're staying here. You caught me a killer. Catching him, that's that's just half the battle. I need your testimony to get a conviction. Well, fine. How long is this going to take you, figure? Well, I'll wire the circuit judge today. Two or three days to get here, two or three days for the trial. Uh, unless, of course, he's in the middle of something right now. All right, Sheriff. Three of us will be out at the trail camp. Can you need us. Mr. Cartwright, you weren't listening. I said this jail would hold Billy. It will. That means there's only one way that Doug can see that Billy cheats the noose. Get rid of the witnesses. That Slater gang will try to kill you. That's all they'll do. Try. As of now, your guests at the county. Protective custody in the hotel under guard. Valerie, you'll have to move out of the boarding house. Bud O'Hara, Jim Snell, Walter Benson. I need him now. And I want you to listen to what I got to say. Ladies' bedrooms on the left, gentlemen's on the right. Thank you very much. Keep this door locked at all times. There'll be an armed deputy in the hall. You need anything? Say the word. Thank you. Well, I guess this will be it for the next few days. Yeah. They know Virginia City, is it? street down there be full of people before you know it. Coming in town to see the trial and the hanging.
Let's get settled down. There are eyewitnesses, Doug. There isn't a lawyer in the world that can beat eyewitnesses. What about the jail? You know that bucket, Jack? Is she a tight one? Forget about the jail. It's built like a fort. We made a big haul this trip. You'll all get a big cut when you've earned it. When Billy is free. I don't care how you do it, Jack. But I want my brother free. Look, Doug, there were four witnesses. Four of them. Sure. What if two of them happened to get killed? Now, something tells me that the others wouldn't be very anxious to talk. <laughs> Come on. I didn't mean to be hysterical. I've read about robberies and murders. Everybody hears and reads about it, but... But when you're there... Mr. Haskell was so kind to me. He was such a nice man to everyone. Yes, he was, Val. He was a fine fellow. I've never even seen a murder trial. I've never been a witness. I probably won't know what to do at all. Have you ever been a witness? Oh, there's nothing to it. You just swear to tell the truth, and the prosecutor asks you a few questions, you answer them, that's it. Oh, I wish I could just go down those stairs and get on a train and go home. Val, uh, where is your home? I don't believe you said. Albany, New York, the state capital. You folks still live there? My mother. She's all the family I have now. There's not much opportunity for a girl to work in New York. Well, I thought I could do better out west. But if I'd known what it was going to be like, I never would have come. Oh, it's not really that bad. We've got some fine towns and some fine folks. Most of them wear guns. Almost everyone. What's so special about Albany? I imagine people get hurt in Albany. People probably even get murdered in Albany. Probably. But I don't have to see it. I didn't have to see the kindest man I'd ever known shot down in cold blood. What's the matter? What's going on? <sighs> Not a thing, little brother. Just talking. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to lose my temper. That's all right. You were a little rough on her, weren't you? Frankly, that was the idea. You wanted me to lose my temper? Why? I was trying to help. Well, I once knew an army doctor. He told me people will never get hysterical alone. They have to have an audience. The best cure is uh, to slap their face. And the next best thing is to tell them something that'll shock them. You're right. We're going to... We're going to be here for two days together before the trial. The last thing you want is an hysterical woman. Thank you, Candy. I'll try and do better. Val, you, uh, you said you were from Albany. What made you pick Sandust? I didn't exactly pick it. I was going to Virginia City, and this is where my money ran out. Virginia City, huh? Well, listen, when this is all over with, you'll have to make it all the way on out and pay us a little visit. I mean, we could rig up enough money to buy a stage ticket, don't you reckon, little brother? I think we can guarantee it. Mr. Haskell told me about the Ponderosa, but, but I'm not sure I can accept. Well, you'd be more than welcome, I assure you. Take my word for it, I wasn't even raised there. It's quite a layout. Who is it? Deputy Jensen. It's all right, sir. Coming on dinner time. Sheriff thought you folks might want to eat. Dinner. Your stomach must be three hours slow and mine's three hours fast. We'll be out in a minute. We'll be waiting. Tell me the truth. 
Do you think the Slater gang will try anything? Well, it's a rough gang. I don't think we're going to take any chances. Now I am scared. There's nothing wrong with that. Scared? Cautious? It's about the same thing. You're looking at three very cautious individuals. Shall we go? just down the street, the Clover Bee. All right, Short, lead off. Daylight, they all want you pretty bad. It cost them. Three of them came in, they left two behind. They killed short. Can you walk? Yeah, I'm so bad. Get into the hotel. Rivers, take care of oh. short. All right, that goes for you, too. I want everybody at the hotel. Nobody leaves without my permission. Yeah. You know, they came from three different directions, Sheriff. A little better timing, and you'd be fresh out of witnesses. Well, I promise you one thing Billy Slater's going to stand trial, and you're going to be there to testify against him if I have to deputize every able-bodied man in this town. Sheriff, I hope you don't break that promise. Murder trial is a holiday for a lot of people. Are you sure Joe's going to be all right? Oh, yeah. I uh, saw the wound. He's hurting some now, but he'll be all right. The doctor and Hoss have been in there almost an hour. They're probably tying a pretty little bow on his bandages. I'm teaching Joe how to use that crutch. Any one of them down there could be of the Slater gang. You know something? You worry too much. Now you follow instructions exactly like I told you. That leg will heal a month sooner than if you put weight on it too soon. Yeah, don't worry, Doc. I will. Much obliged. Joe, do you feel all right? Oh, he's fine. It's more of a burn than a break. That bullet just barely grazed the bone. Now, Joe... Like I said, get lots of rest. And, uh, no foot races. Don't worry about it, Doc. I'll keep him down. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, 
guess this isn't gonna be too bad. Here I am, practically an invalid. Three people will wait on me, hand well, and foot. Take advantage <laughs> of it, little brother. Once we get back to the Ponderosa, it's every man for himself. Yeah, I know. Hey, speaking of, when we get back to the Ponderosa, we made a decision. When we get back, you're gonna be with us. And we're not gonna take no for an answer. I'd like that. Thank you very much for the invitation. And for saving my life. I think that little trip will do her good after all it's happened. Danko. How's it feel? I'll live. We're all living. So far. I'm sorry about it. I'm real sorry. I just never expected anybody to hit in broad daylight. Not even Doug Slater. Well, what we're talking about now, Sheriff, is what are we going to do about the next time? You do agree there will be a next time. I've deputized another half a dozen men. I've got a way to get you from here to the courthouse. If he wants to get you this time, he'll need an army. For a little while there, I thought he already had one. We'll be ready. How's Valerie holding up? Well, much better than expected, to be frank with you. Hmm. She'll be fine. Well, I got one piece of good news. I got a telegram from Judge Wheeler. You should be here by noon tomorrow. What does that mean we can get down to business or we're going to have a lot of lawyer palaver? Judge Wheeler doesn't waste time. That trial will start tomorrow. Meantime, just hang on. We'll do that, Sheriff. Well, only 24 more hours. I might even beat this game. Yeah, why don't you deal us all in? I got a feeling it's gonna be the longest 24 hours we've ever had. Well, you didn't mess it up. You could have done better. You know it. Any of those witnesses get a good look at you at Haskell's? Not a chance. One man, Doug. One gun. One's enough, if it's a good man holding it. Get moving. I get three whole shares. Three. <laughs> well, you got them. Move. I'll play these. What do you mean you'll play those? You're always playing a pat hand. Hold it. Stop right there. It's supper for witnesses. Well, we can see that. Take the tray. Turn around. All right, give it back. Hold it. Hold it. Who's there? Jensen, your supper's here. He's clean, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Smells like fried chicken. That's what it is. Hot biscuits, too.
Loser dropped in. But I searched him. They had it on the tray. Get him out of here. Val, why don't you go on over to your room? Slater, bunch of really mean business. I'll be glad when this is over. The trial hadn't even started yet. Let's go. Walk behind this lead wagon. Okay, let's move out. Guns in the courtroom. You gents leave them all here. That's right. Judge Wheeler's orders. No sidearms except mine. Circuit Court's now in session. The Honorable Judge Horace Wheeler presiding. Be seated. At the first sign of any disturbance, I will order this courtroom cleared. If the prosecution is ready. Ready, Your Honor. So, Doug Slater dropped his brother. What happened then? Uh, Billy Slater ran back through the barn. I went into Mr. Haskell's office. When I got to the back door, I heard a shot. I kicked the door open, and I saw Billy Slater fire at Mr. Haskell again. Who else was in the office besides you, Slater, and Mr. Haskell? Miss Townsend. Just compose yourself, Miss Townsend. Take as much time as you like. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's quite understandable. The loss of an old friend. But all we need to know is what you saw that afternoon. Well, I was surprised. I, I was frightened. Everything just... Miss Townsend, did you see Billy Slater come into the office where you were working? Yes. Did he have a gun in his hand? I, I don't know. I, I can't say.
After Billy Slater came in, did you see Mr. Haskell get shot? I don't know. No, I didn't see him. I was so frightened, I kept my eyes closed. Did you see Billy Slater shoot Matt Haskell? No, I really didn't. Miss Townsend, you've told this court that you were present when Matt Haskell was killed. Well, yes, but... But I was so frightened that I didn't look. I heard the shots, but I didn't see anything. That's all, Miss Townsend. But if you do decide that the evidence here presented does prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Billy Slater, shot and killed Mr. Haskell, then you must return a verdict of guilty of murder. The jury will retire in the custody of the bailiff. This court is now in recess. But it didn't scare you. No, it's all right. Couldn't sleep, huh? No. I uh, mean, neither. You know, I can't figure out about my brother Hoss. He sleeps through anything. Once he gets to snoring, there's no way for anybody else to doze off. You know, I really didn't do very well when I was testifying this morning. No, you did fine. Everybody was nervous. No, but actually, I couldn't remember. I don't think I really saw anything. Well, it's all going to be over pretty soon, maybe tomorrow. Do you think so? I don't see any reason why not. You want to see him hang, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I saw him kill Mr. Haskell in cold blood, pump two shots in him. I want to see him hang. Nobody's thinking about Billy Slater. What did he think about Mr. Haskell? He was afraid. Mr. Haskell went for his gun. Yeah, well, it's funny you didn't think of those things at the trial. All any of you are thinking about is seeing him hang. Yeah, right now, that's what I think about Billy Slater. I think about that and the innocent people that have been killed. I think about his brother and where he is now and what he's going to do next. There was $40,000 in that safe. Enough to buy a poor man anything he wanted. Land, a roof over his head. You wouldn't know about that, would you? Your father owns the biggest ranch in Nevada. I'll bet you never wanted anything you didn't have. Well, everybody wants things they don't have, but they don't kill innocent people to get them. I'll bet you never had to fight for anything in your life. Everybody fights for the things they want. That was a big difference between fighting and killing. You don't know how lucky you are. Get away from the window. I told you to get away from the window. Now get down. You all right? I want you to stay down. What's going on? Open up. Shot through the window. You all right? Who is it? Jensen. Came from outside. Nobody heard. Check outside. They won't give up, will they? No. Doesn't make any difference whether they hit anybody or not. By tomorrow, every man on that jury is going to know what happened. They're going to start wondering whether they ought to find Billy Slater guilty or not. Circuit court's now in session. Judge Horace Wheeler presiding.
You may be seated. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Return the jurymen to the box. Anybody moves without being told, the judge is a dead man. And you, Sheriff, with your hands up, come in. Now take him off, Sheriff. What you do to me or to anyone else here, you'll answer to the law for this. Shut up. Now, come on. On your feet, Cartwright, you're coming too. Don't try it, big man, or he gets it right here. Come on. You too, come on. Get All right, back off or I drop the judge. <laughs> What'd I tell you, Cartwright? I told your brother Doug would have me out of jail. Come on. They're just walking up the street. Better let them go. If you don't, they'll kill the hostages. a judge. <laughs> scared blue. Everybody in this town is scared to breathe. <laughs> you ain't scared, are you, Val? You just stick close to me, you won't get hurt. Didn't know she was my girl, did you, Cartwright? Didn't know she was in on the robbery. Signal us with a curtain from Haskell's window to tell us when to come into the store. That's why up in the room they didn't shoot at your shadow on the blind. Yeah, that's right, Cartwright. We took real good care of her. Come on. Let's get to the horses. It's got to be a back way out of here. Let's find it. Get limpy here, up on a horse. Cartwright, you're gonna pay for that bullet in my arm. Cover him, you're riding with me. Why'd you help him, Val? So you could have that ranch you were talking about for the two of you? Yes, because I know what it's like to want just a little of what others have. Hurry it up! Oh, you're never gonna have that ranch. Just more killing. Tell him, Billy, we're gonna have a ranch. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> But you promised. Yeah. Yeah, I promise a lot of things. Like, uh, there wouldn't be any killing now. Come on! I'm not going. Not until you promise. Suit yourself. Billy! You're not going to hurt anyone ever again.
sorry. Don't you worry. We'll get you a doctor. I'm scared. Please, hold my hand. By myself. Oh, I'm sure you can, but I ain't got nothing else to do. Well, Sheriff, thank you for the use of the mugboard. We'll see that you get it back. No hurry. Hey, you about ready to go? Me? I've been ready to go ever since we came into this town. We better get on the way. It's a long way home. It sure is, and a lot of folks don't get there. Thanks, Sheriff. Signal. Cavalry uses polished steel. I you use mirrors. Well, if it's a cavalry, it looks like they just ride down here and check on us, don't it? I think we better change plans. Coldest Corner is only about four or five hours ride from here. It's out of our way, but they got a telegraph wire. We can find out if anything's going on. from home.
We got three graves to dig, Paul. We got five graves to dig. Two more in there, shot and scalped. I'll be able to find some shovels in the hardware store, huh? some blankets in the hotel. The graveyard's right down the street. The sooner we get started. I'll take a look. We'll all take a look. Long enough to get here. You heard us right in? I heard you. Why the wait? There's some guy who speaks English pretty well. I didn't know who was out there. It took a while before one of you came into sight. How are the noise then? Why don't you just shout out to us? Mister, you spend four days without water. You haven't got much voice for shouting. Four days? Paiute busted this town just after first light four days ago. How come you're still here now? I was under the bunk. The blanket pulled down. There'll be some keys out there in that mess in the office. Telegraph said the war parties were headed this way. Most folks started folding up, getting ready to fight, and the telegraph went dead. Cut wire, I guess. Everybody spooked. Most of them headed for the hills, hide there. Even the sheriff took off at the last minute. Tall man, gray hair, white shirt, black vest. Yeah. We found him in the stable, dead. Been cussing that man for four days. Well, I couldn't see what happened to the folks who stayed, but I could hear it. I'm beginning to think one of those braves is wearing those keys for a trophy or something. Yeah. Hey, hey there. Yeah, I found something too. Take a look at this. Uh, that, that could be enough for you. Make yourself sick. Right, come on. Oh, it's good. That's got to be the best there ever was. You know, there's something else I heard. Four days and nights in this sweat box. I heard water splashing in that fountain. If you want to drive somebody crazy, that's the way to do it. What'd you say your name was? I didn't say. Nobody asked. Oh, well, my name's Ben Cartwright. This is uh, Candy. My son's Joe and Hoss. Candy? Much obliged for the water. Driving some horses through a vine trip in Utah. Cut right. I've heard that name. You got a big spread up Virginia City Way. I'm glad to hear you got horses. I was wondering what I was going to ride when you let me out. Hey, well, in the meantime, what about the name? The persistent cuss, ain't you? The name's Kelly. Mike Kelly. I got tossed in here for tearing up that saloon. Oh, you know, I must say, Mr. Kelly, you look wonderful for a man 72 years old. 72? Now, yeah, right here in the ledger. Mike Kelly, age 72, weight 130 pounds, charge common drunk. You gained a little weight, Mike. Yeah, for a man that hadn't had any food or water for four days, I'd say that's a pretty good trick. 
Well, maybe this makes a little more sense. Josh Tanner. Age 30-some. Weight, 180. Charge, first-degree murder. Yeah. Too bad you found that book. Kind of put you in the middle, doesn't it, Mr. Cartwright? You uh, can't stay here. Can't leave you here to starve to death or die of thirst. We could use another drover. You take me along and you turn me over to the law when you get home? If you get home? Suppose I say no. It's up to you. It's your choice. Real hard nose, ain't he? When he has to be. You related? No, I work for him when there's nothing better to do. He's fair and honest. He won't ask you to do anything he wouldn't do himself. Honest, huh? The honest ones that get me in trouble. Well, like you said, it's your choice. That's a big country out there. It's Paiute country now. A man on foot wouldn't have a prayer. Right. You got yourself a hand. For starters, I'll take that shovel. No, no. no for starters, you get yourself something to eat. Four days without food, you're no good to us. Find yourself something to eat and then spill off Joe up there. I'll get some grub and eat up there. This headstone might interest you. Murder. In Coulter Corners, that's what they call it when a Coulter gets shot. Even if it's a fair fight, and he draws first. a month's pay, the Paiutes didn't leave one gun, let alone two. They're holdout guns, in case of trouble in the saloon. Old Pete kept them on a shelf up under the bar. The Paiutes were so busy grabbing whiskey, they didn't think to look. So how come you remember they were there? The last time I saw this scatter gun, it was aimed at my head. Field glasses, compass, and cap. That colonel must have kept one of everything in the army, I reckon. Well, add uh, 20 buttons to that list. Yes, sir. Hey, make it out. All this stuff's ready to go, Joe. Good enough. Fair and honest, huh? Looks to me like a cleaning house. We got a saddle, a bridle, and a blanket, and these saddlebags from the livery stable. Come on. Tanner got a shotgun, a 45, and a bottle of whiskey at us alone. Better end that, fellas. Fetch an IOU. I got 12 shotgun shells and half a box of 45s. Well, as soon as we finish here, we'll ride out, huh? 
fair and honest. And a waste. Everything in his town is owned by somebody out in that graveyard. Out here, give me a hand. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. You don't know me, ma'am. But we're going to take care of you. You're safe now. Didn't know I'd be needing this so quick. I saw her around town for the last month or so. I think she was passing through from somewhere back east. Mr. Cartwright, unless you don't mind leaving her behind, I guess we won't be riding out. And within two hours... Everyone, the whole town was running for their lives. They were loading up wagons, buggies. Everyone had a different idea which direction to go. I don't have any family here. I have a horse. But Mr. Staley was kind enough to take me in his buckboard. He thought we could make it to Lathrop. Only an, an hour or so from town, near Rocky Point. Miss Blanchett, you don't have to talk about it. No, I, I want to. Somebody has to know. Suddenly, out of, out of nowhere, we saw three of them. Mr. Staley told me to get off the wagon and hide in the rocks. He almost pushed me off. And then he whipped the horses into a run so the Indians would follow him. And he made it over the ridge, and they galloped after him. Quite a man. Later... Later, the, the Paiutes rode past where, where I was hiding, and I heard them. I heard them laughing and yelling. And one of them was Carrie. <laughs> Mrs. Blanchett. You're right. I'm Josh Tanner, the man they said killed Billy Coulter. Cartwrights know they found me in the jail. Everything all right out there? So far. Candy sent me in to rustle up something for supper. You'll find plenty of grub over there. Mrs. Burns, we found these in the general store. You're going to need them. I know I'm delaying you. Mrs. Burns. The pirates have come and taken whatever it was they wanted, and they've gone. We're just about as safe here as any place. Till tomorrow, maybe. Are you going to get yourself a good rest tonight? And we'll all be ready to ride out early in the morning. Tanner, I will leave you at sunset. Thank you. Ms. Burns. What do you know about that man? Just what I heard, that he shot the culture boy, Bill. That's all I know. I I've only been here for three weeks. I've been waiting for my husband to send me stagecoach fare from Virginia City. We're from Ohio, Mr. Cartwright. 
Paul couldn't make a go of it, and he's trying to work something out in the silver mine. Well, you know, we're from Virginia City. Yes, your, your son Joseph told me. You never should have left, and I never should have started out. Yeah. Sorry. Guess that's not the right thing to say. It's just that I don't feel I'll ever be a pioneer woman. And I hate to admit it. I'm afraid. Ma'am, let me tell you something. You women call it being afraid. We men call it being cautious. It's just about the same thing. I think these horses would feel a lot better if we let them run free. Yeah, man, they would at that, but Paul wants a bled, that's the way it's gonna be. Now he's the boss, they're his horses. They're good stallions, fine as I ever saw. You know, if the Paiute knew there were animals like this around, they'd come howling over that hill 150 strong. You seem to know them pretty well. I had a little horse ranch of my own till they came howling out of the sunrise one morning. You all right, ma'am? You need some water or anything? No, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. We better get them moving. Come on, come on. Get them. Like that one? Bide. I didn't get a chance to look. I think it was just a scout. Well, there's another one. Right up there.
build lots of fires. Only four. I was beginning to think you were inviting a Paiute to supper. What changed your mind? The way you lit the fires after sunset. And it's too dark to see the smoke and still too light to see the flames. It's a smart trick. How are the stallions? Well, they're bedded down, resting easy. I see what you got in mind. If the Paiute come onto our track, they'll think we're a column of cavalry. They find this camp with four cold fires, bits and pieces of soldiers' gear sticking out of the grass. They'll be sure of it. I hope so. We may find out pretty quick. Hoss told me he thought he saw a flash just before sunset. North of us this time. You ought to be sleeping. Virginia City. Your husband is there, waiting. I don't care. If I never show up, Paul will think it was the Indians. Either we make it to Virginia City or we don't make it anywhere. But we could leave them somewhere along the way. I've got Cartwright pegged. He has an obligation to turn me in, and he will. But you didn't kill Billy Coulter. He drew first. He walked into my room with a gun in his hand. But who knows that? Except you and me. Then I've got to tell them. I told you to keep quiet at the inquest, and you did going to have to do the same thing now. But I can't, Josh. They'll hang you. What about you? Your whole life will be ruined. Oh. My life is ruined if I'm not with you. You never knew Paul, Josh. But it was over before I met you. He's a fine man. And I admire him. But I don't love him. Don't say it. Just keep quiet. Promise. A liar's promise. A lady's promise. I promise. Sleep nerves, I suppose. I was just telling Mrs. Burns how the Paiute, in fact, most Indians, won't raid at night. Yes, I've heard that, but I don't think I believe it. No, it's, it's true, all right. It's uh, part of their religion. They believe that if a, if a warrior is killed during the night, his spirit is lost and wanders forever looking for his happy hunting ground. Well, I think you ought to try to sleep, Mrs. Burns. Yes, I will. Thank you. Well, we'd best be ready to move out at dawn.
trying to keep up, but I'm so tired. Can't we rest for a little? Not if you want to keep that pretty hair of yours. We've got to keep moving. Here we go. like that, huh? You just let him grab her and ride off. Didn't even go after her. Well, that figures. You had to save your expensive stallions. You got a good-sized gash in the back of your head. Cleaned it best I could. Thank you for that. The gun's on the ground right behind you. Next you had. There we got them all. He dropped something. Well, that Mrs. Burns, she rode with us. She was sick, scared. She never whimpered. If you're not interested, I'm going after her. Tanner, I'll go with you. Nobody's going anywhere. Even if you were lucky enough to catch up with him before they got to the main camp, they'd still kill her before he could do a thing about it. You know the Paiute card, right? You know what they'll do to her. Yes. And when they're through with her, they'll sell her to the Comancheros. Look, you don't own me. I'm going after her. You stay right where you are. You don't need me. One man more or less won't make any difference. You listen to me. You listen good. The Paiute aren't going to do anything till they boast and brag and work themselves up to it. And there's one place they're not going to be looking for us. And that's right in their own camp. All going? Yeah, all of us. Lake here. Got a rope corral right in here. Teepees set in here. And when we were in luck, it's not the main camp, just a raiding party. It can't be more than old 25, 30 Indians. I noticed a guard in front of this end teepee. I figure that's where they got Mrs. Burns. Well, 
Head on attack won't work. Miss Burns will be the first one to kill. Paul, oh, those pirate mares in that corral. If they could see or smell our stallions, they'd run with them. If they could get out of that corral. It's a pretty solid rope corral. Somebody have to get in there and cut it. The wind's toward the lake. We could time it right to the minute. Is there any ground cover there at all? Yeah, yeah, there's some here. You'd have to stay pretty low. You're thinking of that guarded teepee. That's my job. I lost the lady. I'll get her back. It's a two-man job. You can't do it yourself. My kind of work. All right, that's yours. Joe, the crown's your job. Right, Paul. Horse in the timber. The saddle horses. Now, I'll bring three stadiums right down here.
Take a minute or two to see about this axle. If you uh, want to go see the sheriff, he's right over there. I'm in no big hurry. Thought you might want to walk in by yourself. I'm going to tell him everything that happened. Mary. Maybe that'll help me, and maybe it won't. But sure as shooting, it'll ruin your life. I don't care what people say about me. I care. Especially when the things they say are ugly. And women only whisper them. I don't want that to happen to you. The worst that can happen to me is I'll do time in prison. And I'll survive. I'm not sure I will. Yes, you will. You're married. Any man you'd marry, he's got to be quite a guy. You know what? He's checking every stage and rider coming in, asking about you. You're just making it worse. Mary, look at me. You were stuck in Coulter Corners, alone and scared, fighting off Billy Coulter when I rode in. What happened then has happened before. People get over it. Ready? I got no choice. The law was holding you, then it's Yes, clear. you do, Sheriff. It wasn't murder. It was self-defense. Sheriff, this lady's trying to help me because she thinks she owes me something. She's going to tell you that she saw the shooting. But she didn't. She wasn't even in Coulter Corners. Thanks for the try, Mrs. Burns. Coulter Corners. That's Lexington County, isn't it? That's right. A week... After you and the boys left, the governor sent Judge Spear. Look into things. A lot of talk at old Colonel Colder and played fast and loose with the law. The judge had to come back, count the rates. Uh-huh. Hear that, Tanner? Yes, I did. God, you're safe. We're together. You're a very lucky woman, Mrs. Burns. These are the two men that saved my life. Mr. Cartwright, this is my husband. Mr. Cartwright, how can I thank you? No need. Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner, I'm very grateful. And the sheriff, I know. I'm afraid I've been a nuisance every day asking about you. Worked out fine. How can I ever thank you? You've seen all the thanks I need. We're all thankful. Mr. Tanner. Thank you for everything. Goodbye, Mrs. Byrne.
Thank you. All I could do, dear, was hope. It sounded so horrible. What wonderful men to bring you through. Yes, you'd have liked them. They were fine men. Mr. Tanner, you're not going to be in here very long. When you get out, how about signing on with us at the Ponderosa? Thanks. I'd best move along. Deputy, if I've got a choice, give me the cell with the best bed. You can use it. Uh -huh. 